James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, the dividing lines in America are becoming wider and deeper. Today, the only group which you can hold up to public mockery and pillaring are Christians. Opposition to biblical truth grows stronger by the day, and many of those tasked with bringing us truth are now lying to us. Every means of communication is going to be used to communicate truth and to communicate falsehood. Those two are always going to be in contest with each other. How should Christians be prepared in a time of hostility? Join us today on Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. As we begin today, I want to invite you to support the unique and vital work of this ministry by becoming a faith partner. There is simply no other Christian media ministry doing what we do, but we need your ongoing support to continue. If you contact us right away and begin giving an automatic monthly gift of $35 or more, we will thank you by sending you the beautiful leather-bound D. James Kennedy Topical Study Bible. This study Bible is Dr. Kennedy's magnum opus with hundreds of articles on everything from whether the Bible teaches socialism to when civil disobedience is justified. This is the most wide-ranging collection of Dr. Kennedy's wealth of wisdom available in any one volume. And we will send it to you as our thanks for becoming a faith partner with an automatic monthly donation of $35 or more. Please contact us right away to join. Simply call toll-free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org forward slash faith partners. On today's program, we will look at the rising hostility against Christians and biblical values in America today. We'll share with you some outstanding resources that will help you live out your faith in the voting booth this fall. As we begin, we recognize the divide in our nation is deeper than it's been in generations. That has been aided in no small part by the media who have jettisoned all pretense of objectivity and enlisted as soldiers in the culture war on the side of the political left. Our own David Wright has more. Well, the evidence is clear that media is biased. Very well documented research shows that the editorial control centers of today's media are leftist. People just don't believe what they hear on the media or watch on the media anymore because it's just not true. Media bias is, is everywhere. The liberal platforms far outnumber the conservative platforms. Um, and we, we just simply have to recognize that we're always going to be uh, in a battle for the minds of men. The mainstream media has notoriously leaned to the left for years. But recently, many have noted that the amount of bias and hypocrisy displayed by media members has been egregious. Very rarely these days do you see a reporter actually report the news and simply give information. Now it's all tied up with left-wing commentary, um, and it's so skewed that you can't even tell the difference anymore between opinion and reporting. They ignore facts that don't fit their narrative, and they play up facts that do fit their narrative. They don't even have a pretense of uh, objectivity anymore. They've become the PR wing of the progressive left, and they ought to, they've destroyed their credibility. Bill Martinez is a conservative radio host. They've abandoned their, their true reason to exist, and that is to document history to be uh, documentarians of what is going on in our culture. 
I dare say that uh, several decades from now, when people look back on the reporting of the mainstream media, uh, they're, they're going to get a very uh, prejudiced viewpoint of what was happening in our culture. And a lot of stories are going to be left untold. Every uh, uh, communications platform is going to be a contested field all the time. It doesn't matter what technology you're using, whether it's the, the pen and ink or the printing press or the internet, no matter what it is. Every means of communication is going to be used to communicate truth and to communicate falsehood. Those two are always going to be in contest with each other. Take the case of Justice Brett Kavanaugh. While undergoing his confirmation to the Supreme Court, he was accused of sexual assault. How did the media cover this story? A woman says the president's U.S. Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, assaulted her when she and Kavanaugh were both in high school. A high stakes he said, she said, that could determine the next justice of the Supreme Court. I think this disinformation campaign against Justice Brett Kavanaugh uh, certainly was one of the uglier moments I've seen in Washington, D.C. in trying to besperge a good man's name. Uh, look, there was a lot of bad reporting on this issue. Um, and I think Brett Kavanaugh, what happened to him was a travesty. I mean, they absolutely smeared not only him, but his family. They got dragged through the mud for days. And all it took was one woman making unsubstantiated claims against him, claims that couldn't be proven, claims that her story had fallen apart, the witnesses that she claimed to, to have been at this party didn't even remember being there. Literally all of the details of Christine Blasey Ford's story was completely falling apart. But you saw how the left and the media ran with it like it was the gospel. The Me Too movement is all about justice. Women shouldn't be sexually abused, raped, or uh, put upon by men, but you can go overboard. Now you're guilty until proven innocent. But when Joe Biden was accused of sexual assault in March of 2020, the media all but excused him. Joe Biden today emphatically denying he sexually assaulted a former Senate aide 27 years ago. You fast forward now to a couple years later when Joe Biden uh, is running for president and a woman comes out against Joe Biden, who's a, a man who's known for being a little handsy. He's known for touching people when they don't want to be touched. He's had to apologize for this in the past. Uh, and now you have a woman, Tara Reid, coming forward with very substantiated claims. When you have her story come out, the media not only buries it, they didn't talk about it for days. In the first few interviews that Joe Biden did, they didn't even ask him about it. Um, there was no mention of it whatsoever. If you look back at headlines reporting that story, um, they, they completely smeared Tara Reid. They immediately began casting doubt on whether or not she was telling the truth. So I think that the bias there couldn't be more obvious depending on who is being accused. There's a lot of excitement around the idea that women will be heard and be listened to. There is also due process. And uh, the fact that Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And the hypocrisy doesn't stop there. Recently, NFL quarterback Drew Brees came under fire for his comments regarding the American flag. I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Drew Brees, if he comes out and says, look, I'm going to stand for the flag. He didn't come out and, 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 and berate those who take a knee. He didn't come out and insult people who maybe take a different tack. He simply said, look, I'm going to stand for the flag. And I mean, ABC and NBC spent two days two days on their nightly news coverage talking about how um, that was so controversial, uh, insinuating that um, that was giving a nod to racism. He was absolutely dragged through the mud, forced to apologize. Breeze was ridiculed as a racist and forced to apologize multiple times. But when NFL star Deshaun Jackson posted a supposed Hitler quote, the media seemingly forgave him immediately. 
The Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver in recent days posted on Instagram quotes that are falsely attributed to Adolf Hitler. You have Deshaun Jackson come out posting blatantly anti-Semitic quotes on Twitter, um, quoting Louis Farrakhan, uh, Louis Farrakhan quoting Hitler. ABC and NBC, though, didn't even mention it after it happened. CBS did a whole segment about, about the impact that hail has on an airplane, but they didn't talk about it. Um, because again, you have somebody who is on the left, you have somebody who is a member of a certain racial minority, and if you're a part of an aggrieved class, someone that the left has decided, um, you know, has been marginalized, well then you're given a pass to pretty much say whatever you want. I truly don't think Deshaun meant any sort of hate or anything. I think it came way more from a place of ignorance and that's something that we're seeing. Do the mainstream media only report on stories that fit their narrative? Take a look at the coverage of the Black Lives Matter protests. We have an insurrection going in this country by criminals, beat up old ladies, kill people, set fire to buildings, and there's no cops around because the Democrat Party is in full-throated support of the vandals and the criminals. You have businesses being looted and burned and vandalized. You have cars being smashed and pe people are literally being ripped out of their vehicles and beaten senseless in the streets by Black Lives Matter, by Antifa. But the media is not going to show you that, right? They're going to say that, oh, these protests are mostly peaceful. The fact of the matter is, is the mainstream media has been bought and sold and they're 100 percent in with uh, with with, with the radical arm of Black Lives Matter, these democratic socialists, and, and this is where America is kind of asleep at the wheel. The mainstream media seemingly calls good evil an evil good. They justify violence. They say that America is systematically racist. Is the media being used as a weapon to spew out propaganda? We've got to understand we're dealing with this antichrist spirit, that's kind of strong language, but I do believe it is an antichrist, ungodly spirit that is trying to produce anarchy and violence. Uh, it's the same spirit, if I can be so bold as to say this, that motivated the KKK and other people, just hatred. There really is a war on truth. This has been going on for a long time. Now we're at a point where, um, you know, Christian thought is canceled. I, I call it the spirit of invalidation that has been running rampant for decades. Well, and you have Christians being persecuted all around the world, and the media ignores it. A consistently Christian worldview is an immediate threat to the left's agenda, which is why you have uh, leftists throughout history who have said those exact words. You know, Karl Marx himself identified Christianity as one of the chief impediments to the establishment of globalized uh, workers of the world uniting. Christianity has been consistently identified as one of those threats. My call to the church is, look, we, we've got to stand up. I mean, this is only the second nation that God has basically put his seal of approval on. Because of the pilgrims, they, they made a covenant with God, and that's what we've been living on. And as Ronald Reagan said, a nation that fails to realize that it is a nation under God will be a nation gone under. And we're pretty close to that right now. We have a heart problem, and there's only one who's ever fixed a heart problem, and that's Jesus Christ. That is how we change hearts. If you change hearts, you change politics. If you change hearts, that's how you change society. Perhaps we should not be surprised in an era of unbelief and hardness of heart that the media, along with many other vital institutions, has walked away from truth. As Jesus told us of himself, the light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. In a culture moving away from God's truth at light speed, Christians must be prepared for heated opposition. Dr. D. James Kennedy shares more in this portion of his message, The War Against Christianity. We live in an age, I am happy to say, in an age which stands four square against bigotry and prejudice. 
unless, that is, unless that bigotry is directed against Christians, Christ, or Christianity. Today, the only group which you can hold up to public mockery and pillaring are Christians. My friends, we're talking today about the age-long war against Christianity, a war which has sometimes been cold and sometimes hot, and I want you to know that it's heating up again in America. Let me tell you that we live in a country that is a two-party political country, but as one writer said, we have a one-party media, a media that is almost entirely antagonistic to Christianity. Eighty-six percent of the media elite, according to the Lichter Rothman report, never or rarely attend any church or synagogue. The war against Christianity is heating up. As Jesus himself said, that the world would hate us. And why? He said, if the world hate you, know that it hated me first. The world hates Jesus Christ, which is undoubtedly got to be the most astonishing fact in history. The harmless, sinless, holy Son of God, loving and compassionately came to live the perfect life that we have all failed to do and to die an atoning death in our stead, taking upon himself all of the vileness of our sins and becoming sin for us and then being held up between heaven and earth upon a cross where the wrath of his own Father is poured out upon him in our place. And he dies in our stead and purchases for us eternal life which freely Mirabile dictu, wonder to tell, freely he offers to every last one of us, sinful sons of sinful fathers, the gift of eternal life, if we will but trust in him. And for this anguish, this agony, this trouble of coming into this dark world, he receives, he is requited with hatred. That is astonishing. He himself answers the question, why? He says, they hated me without cause. His only desire was for our good. His only purpose was that we should live happily ever after. And for that, We gave him our hatred. The world, the scripture says, the world is at enmity with God. The world will hate you, he told us. And so he sets before us the world and the church. Now the church consists of all of those who are united by a living faith to Jesus Christ and in whose hearts he lives and his spirit and love dwell. The world consists of all of those who are not connected to God through Jesus Christ. They are the aggregates of the godless. So I would ask you, into which group are you found? In which group are you found? The real church or the world? Now they're both united. The church, in spite of its apparent divisions all over the world, is united and one in Jesus Christ. There is one faith that joins us to one Savior. And so the world, in spite of all of its divisions, political, economic, religious, and all of the pagan religions of the world, they are all united in their inveterate hostility to Jesus Christ. Well, What can we do about this war against Christ and Christianity that is heating up? We can share the gospel. And one of the reasons, my friend, that the war is heating up today 
is because we have been derelict in our responsibility to do that. And so the number of those who are not a part of Christ has been growing and multiplying and becoming stronger and stronger until now. They are turning on the church. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The Bible says that all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have you been persecuted for your faith in Christ? I don't mean for your ordinary disposition, for your critical attitude, for your backbiting tongue, but have you been persecuted for your faith in Jesus Christ? But we can rejoice and we can love our enemies and we can use the gospel to transform them into part of the body of Christ, to part of his church. That's what we can do as the war against Christianity heats up again in our time. As Dr. Kennedy just shared, all who live according to the truth of Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. And we must be prepared for it and not surprised by it. And yet the good news of the gospel is that individuals and indeed entire cultures can be transformed by the Spirit of God. And that's our fervent desire for America. We are a nation born in Christian truth as the eventual result of a great outpouring of the Spirit of God that we call the Great Awakening. Yet the very pillars of that founding are under assault in our nation. And the year 2020 may well be the watershed that determines if we return to God and His blessings or if we speed off into the abyss. We have an important new book that will help encourage and equip you for this battle. It's Dr. Richard Lee's book, The Battle for the Soul of America and How Christians Can Win It. And we want to send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. Dr. Lee is an authority on America's true Christian history, and in this book you will discover what God expects from Christians in America. You will also learn how your voice and your vote really do matter, and much, much more. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $50 or more, we will send you the book, The Battle for the Soul of America, plus the seven DVD set, How Should We Then Vote? Featuring key messages from Dr. D. James Kennedy on crucial issues that need to inform and guide the vote of every Christian. You will not only want to watch this yourself, but you're going to want to share it with your friends, your family, maybe even your pastor and your Sunday school class or your small group, all in anticipation of the November election. We have seen the results in many major cities of godless, socialistic, culturally Marxist policies. Will we allow the entire nation to head in the same direction? The 2020 vote will likely determine that for generations to come. It's imperative that you be prepared. We will send you Dr. Richard Lee's book, The Battle for the Soul of America and How Christians Can Win It, as our thanks for your generous donation. And we will send you the book plus the seven DVD set from Dr. D. James Kennedy, How Should We Then Vote? As our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free 877-962-7677 or 
go online to djkm.org. The onset of the coronavirus pandemic has revealed many things, not the least of which is that there really is a war against Christianity in America. Initially, virtually all of America shut down, as we were told, 15 days to flatten the curve. Well, that was six months ago. And the curve was, in fact, successfully flattened, yet, Government officials in many places are still enforcing draconian restrictions with churches in the center of their sites. The First Amendment guarantees that government cannot interfere with the free exercise of religion, but that has not stopped a number of dictators in training like California Governor Gavin Newsom and Nevada Governor Steve Sisolak and many others who have seized the opportunity provided by the pandemic to specifically target churches with the most onerous restrictions. Dear friends, just as it was 2,000 years ago, those who exclusively worship God are the biggest threat to those who want to accrue power to themselves. Six months into the lockdown, it has become obvious that forced church closures have little to do with public health. In Nevada, the government kept churches closed while allowing casinos to reopen. Gambling was decreed more essential than the worship of the living God. And these restrictions were enforced at gunpoint. One church appealed to the Supreme Court, but to no avail. Now, while each congregation should exercise its own God-directed conscience on how to meet or not meet for the safety of its members and community, these political leaders, by contrast, have exposed their true motives and forfeited their authority in this area. Biblically, we are to obey those in authority, but not when their commands contradict God's. The Bible does not teach the divine right of kings or governors or mayors. The Constitution is the highest civil law in our land, and we do not owe obedience to those who disobey it. And as Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch rightly said in his dissent, there is no world in which the Constitution permits Nevada to favor Caesar's palace over Calvary Chapel. And so with the Apostle Peter and the faithful down through the ages, we must obey God rather than men. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. Thanks for being with us. Here's what's next on Truths That Transform. There are those who positively detest the idea of any connection between God and country. There, for a generation, I believe, has been a battle raging for the soul of America. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.